morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I hope you guys are doing well this morning. It is a glorious, sunny, sunny day here in northern Idaho, and I am just so excited because we've had a lot of gloomy days, and I'll tell you, the sunshine can just be such a mood changer. Not that you know that was necessary but it's just oh my goodness it just makes such a world of difference having beautiful blue skies and sunshine so we are thoroughly enjoying that this week uh, have had quite a bit of that and have been getting out um, every day and enjoying it getting these furry kids out because they're gonna start terrorizing my house good morning everybody good morning Chad good morning Jill glad to have you I can see there's a couple others joining it's weird sometimes it doesn't always show all of the activity at once so I don't notice that everybody's on until after the fact but welcome and good morning I hope you guys are all doing well and I wanted to do a progress check today I wanted you guys to share with me some um, highlights maybe even some of your struggles that you've had or that you've overcome since we started all this we've been talking about getting your schedule in order we have been talking about setting goals for the year uh, we've talked about getting your schedule back on track when things go awry which I'm sure many of you have already had things um, hiccups thrown in your path um, this year already I know we have and it can you not be for a minute, please? I was just spinning for a little bit. Not sure what that was all about, but that wasn't a good start. The mountain boy is doing some of his uh, small motor training online, so that could have been it. So I just asked him to stop. Um, but share with me. Um, it's always good for us to bounce things off of one another. It's good to have those people in our lives that we can go to to share our joys. Oh, awesome, Chad. Chad said Evernote is the best. Yes, I absolutely love Evernote. If you guys are new to joining me and you haven't checked out Evernote, you can do so by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote, all one word, E-V-E-R-N-O-T-E. -E. It is a desktop application that can also sync up with your iPads, your iPhones, your iJiggers, as the mountain man would say. And I can't live without it because it just keeps track of what my brain no longer does and just keeps everything in one place. It's amazing. So I'm glad to hear you're liking it, Chad. But in life, you know, we really need those people in our lives that we can check in with, that we have, that we can go to to celebrate our, our joys, our accomplishments, our heartaches, uh, pray for us. Good morning, Deb. And having those people in our lives that we can go to really helps replenish the soul. It helps to keep our joy overflowing. It helps to keep us um, whole in, in ways. Um, good morning, Holly. I think it's just so important to have those special people to go to in our lives. Um, we, we are meant to be part of a community. We are not meant to be hermits. If you hear stories of people that walked off and ended up in the woods and lived there their whole lives by themselves, you also hear the stories of how they went nuts. And there's a reason for that. You need people in your lives to be able to just keep you balanced. The more I use it, the more I find I have to do and remember I have to do it. Exactly, Chad. He's talking about Evernote. Oh, my goodness. I know. I, I use it for everything. Good morning, Rachel. Speaking of those special peoples, <laughs> Deb says, hello, having connection issues. Yeah, it was a little funny a little bit ago. Hopefully, it'll pick up. We've got beautiful sunshine here today, so I'm thinking that it should help. Uh, right back at you, Holly. Um... But having those special people in our lives, I really feel is important. And I'm sure many of you can relate to this. We have a bunch of different special people. Like my my husband is my hub. My husband is my everything. I you know wish and want to share everything with him. But not everything does he understand. I start speaking woman and he gets a little frosty eyed. And I know that many of you men can relate and I know you women can relate because there's things that we often want to share and they just don't get. All right, am I back? Hey, look, I'm back and I'm gone. Sorry, guys. 
I was trying to better our connection, so I thought maybe there was something in the way there. All right. Oh, very funny, Jill. Jill said, what, I'm not supposed to be a hermit? Well, we often are sometimes, too, but that's part of why I'm discussing this today is because we went out Sunday and spent time with some friends and went to church um, since we were able to get out, and it reminded me the importance of not being shut in all the time. So, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It paused twice now on me, so hopefully now that I've made this adjustment, we should be good. Um, I'm kind of thinking something was blocking my signal there. So, um, I think what I was going to say before it started spinning on me was that you guys can probably relate. We all have like different kinds of friends. Oh, and I, ah, it's fighting with me today. I'm not sure why. Um, I was actually saying before about, um, men getting that glass and women trying to share things and women understanding because there's things they want to share. You know, it goes back and forth. Women talk, you know, women and men talk men and we get confused. So it's nice to have same sex friends that we can communicate with. So you guys, it's good to have your buddies and us women, it's good to have other uh, girlfriends that we can chat with and bounce things off of. We also have some of those friends that are good for, you know, listening about some things, but maybe they are negative um, when it comes to, you know, um, risky things. I have some friends that just don't understand my desire to take risks. And so sometimes they can be, um, a little bit of a, a downer when I share something that I'm really excited about that we're doing or going to do. So you know who your friends are that you can bounce certain things off of. And it's nice to have that good mix. Um, some of them keep us centered and balanced and out of trouble when we do get a little bit crazy. Um, but it's important to have those friends. It's also important to remember to get out and have community. Now, Jill had just mentioned what uh, she's not supposed to be a hermit and we do tend to be hermits we have chosen to live back in away from the hustle bustle and we get stuck back here sometimes and sometimes we just choose to be back here and don't necessarily go out well we also in doing so living this way have grown over the years um, we already didn't like large crowds but as we age as we are out here longer crowds become even more and more difficult and since my illness I it's just uh, it's too much so we like to um, have community in our own little way and we invite our friends back here we'll have a fire uh, we'll have a meal we'll go out for the day hiking which reminds me I so wish I could take you guys with me on my hikes right now it is just so gorgeous out I've got to figure out a way to do this that I can incorporate my hiking video with you guys because I'd like to go do some shelter building and um, looking for antlers and things and it would just be so much fun to take you guys with but anyway we bring friends back here and we enjoy our own little community and you know you got to learn what works best for you um, one of the very important communities that we enjoy heavily is is our church and um, being a web designer I did help with the church's website and got them on iTunes I have to admit and be honest I had ulterior motives because that way we can listen to church from anywhere if we can't get out of here so oh Pat Kenny I just saw you pop across my screen good morning sir I love you <laughs> but being able to um, participate in church, uh, be a part of that community. Um, if you can't get out, have means of having that community in your home. You know, we do church at home a lot in the winter time. It's just not easy for us to get in and out. And oftentimes the roads between here and there are pretty sketchy. So it's just safer and smarter. But there's also a lot of local communities available to you guys. And last week we were talking about using these winter months um, to educate ourselves to whether it's whether it's on preparedness, whether it's on homesteading, gardening, whether it's just a hobby you enjoy. It doesn't matter what it is, but instead of sitting like a rock on the couch and and just watching senseless TV, there's so much that we could educate ourselves on and so many new skills we could learn, so many things we could do to just uh, de-stress, enhance our lives, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just find educating in whatever fashion just so rewarding and, and that's why I suggested using the winter months because for me that's my down, more or, or less my downtime. I'm always busy but 
it's my downtime that I am enabled to do things like that. Chad says, good for you guys for still doing a house church when you can't get out. You, I, yeah, Chad does the same thing. Yeah, it's just, I can't, I can't not do it anymore, Chad, because it's just, I feel there's such a void and something so missing when we don't do that. And um, we've just really, we've seen so many miracles and have had so many blessings over us over the last couple years. It's just, it's part of our part of our day-to-day -day lives too. So it's just an amazing lifestyle. But um, in addition to, um, you know, taking on things of your own, learning how to do new skills through YouTube or classes, which reminds me, Treyer Wilderness Academy .com is almost live. I am so excited. Um, when we are done here, I'll be working with my virtual assistant and we will be testing out some webinars and getting everything in place. So before the end of the month, um, Treyer Wilderness Academy should be out there. So if you have not um, gone over there and checked that out and subscribed to our waiting list, I encourage you to do so. We will have a lot of really beneficial things going on there, and I'm just so excited. So TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. But also, locally, there's a lot of things available to you guys. There's the 4-H which does a lot of things. Um, my virtual assistant is involved, and so is a dear friend of ours um, in Pennsylvania that's involved heavily in the 4-H, and they just they teach so many things. And I feel that's a great resource for our children is to get involved in the 4-H. It's also a place for adults to get questions answered. There's also your county extension offices. Um, locally, our county extension teaches canning classes. They teach uh, plant identification, I believe. They do all kinds of things. They will check your canning equipment, so if you're out and about and you find a canner at a thrift store, they will check the seals and the gauges to make sure they're working right. So your county extension office is a great resource. They can also direct you to people that maybe um, could educate you on certain topics in the area, you know, like maybe a farrier or maybe a blacksmith or whatever it is you might be looking for. The other thing to keep in mind is that the local colleges also do a lot of free classes, which I was not aware of, but one of my dear friends and my uh, deep muscle therapist used to work at the college and um, has shared a lot of information with me that I was not aware of. So it's really important to just keep digging. You know, when we got out here and we were looking for resources, um, even just, um, I don't know, let's just say lumber, or um, at the top of my head it's just not coming to me, but... Uh, feed stores, you know, that we could buy in excessive bulk and different things like that. Nobody knew anything. So these are people that lived here their whole lives. And I ran into that in Pennsylvania, too, where, you know, people just don't leave their little community. So in order for you to find those things, we need to be able to do our research and keep looking and looking and and digging till you find answers for what you're, what you're in search of. Don't give up. Um, Jill says, I'm finding that going... Gene uh, genealogy has been a great tool for connecting and learning historical skills. Oh, very cool. I, I can totally see that. And, and also just the thrill of uh, connecting the dots with your family heritage and things as well. So I totally get that. And all those things enhance us. You know, those things we learn, we can share. Someone else is always going to be looking for that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's passing on those skills. And right now, that's what we're trying to do with our academy, is harnessing all of those old skills that would otherwise get lost in one place so that people can learn them. Because honestly, without those skills out here, if everything were to fall apart, we could keep going. And that's what we want to teach people, you know, so that you have the skills, whether you use them on a regular basis or not, you still know what they are. You still have them in your arsenal. You still know how to utilize them. But checking out these local um, things is so important. And also finding local farmers, local homesteaders, um, local gardeners. We have a bunch of master gardeners out here, and I am just so excited to tap into their skills. Um, you know, back in Pennsylvania, my, my grandparents didn't do a lot of composting and, and such. You know, they got manure from the local farmer, but they didn't do their own composting. So that was kind of new to me in, in getting that all going. And raising bees, that was new to us. But I, oh, I love all these skills. I love being able to tap into this. Here's a thought for you guys that I bet you didn't think about. When we were talking the other week about 
non-GMO foods and, you know, having animals that, um, like your chickens, that are eating GMO food and then you're getting the GMOs. Well, think about this. I mentioned this to a friend a couple months ago. I love having my bees because I know what my bees are eating and I know that they have a pretty large territory that they go to forage, but I still know that they're not getting pesticides and garbage. Where with the local honey organizations that have their hives set up along the roads and, and in, in the towns, that just makes me a little nervous because I know that those bees are foraging all kinds of toxicities where mine aren't. So there's just so much wholesomeness in the way we live and the way we choose to live and that's why we want to share that with you because there's just so many benefits to knowing things and learning how to to raise bees because bees are on the decline so if we can all tap into something like that and raise our own honey which is very costly really it's like fifty dollars a gallon out here and uh, so to be able to save that money and have that skill, you know, it's just all those skills, crocheting, knitting, blacksmithing. And when I was talking about things last week, guys, guys in general, there's so many other skills that you guys can tap into. Chad likes to wrench, you know, he's, and, and that's what Mountain Ben did, you know, he was a motorhead, he was a diesel head, he liked to get dig into things. And those are skills that are priceless on a homestead. Like I've told you many times with my mountain man, he is just such the MacGyver. He makes things just on the fly. He sees things in such a different way than I can even fathom. It's just really cool. Like when you see in a movie how you see the, um, like just say for instance a Terminator and he has a um, computerized behind the eyeballs and it's flashing and he's registering and calculating all that stuff. That's what I imagine my husband looking like from behind or from within that melon of his. So anyway, went off on a bunny trail. But I want to just encourage you guys to, to have a community, to share your knowledge, to gain knowledge from as many people as you can. I just love sitting down with older people and just totally sucking up their knowledge and their stories. There is just nothing more priceless to me. And we're starting to lose out on that opportunity, guys. So don't miss that opportunity if it's still available to you. And Jill, I wanted to thank you because you inspired this week's class. Because last week after class, Jill uh, messaged me and shared a whole bunch of stuff with me that was actually very priceless to me. Um, and very fitting, by the way, Jill, because it was something we were looking for and I didn't even mention it. So that was really cool. Divine intervention there. And uh, many of you have shared your knitting patterns with me a woman from church just shared some knitting information with me and she also makes pine needle baskets which are absolutely out of this world and she does classes on it so I'm going to be learning how to do that before long too there's just there's just endless things we can do but having a community and knowing where to find your resources and finding resources that other people may not have like I said there's master gardeners out here there's master canners out here and I have to believe there are many in your area too it just may require you to look you might have dairy farmers or goat farmers or whatever is going on out there in your area and whatever you're trying to learn copper shingle maker, maker metal work for wood stoves I have all the antique tools too oh that's so very cool yeah we love having the old tools and and that is so awesome Jill what would happen if this small group of people could do if we all got together we all have been blessed with things it would be endless it would and that's just it and that's what I like about this community that we have going so today guys Feel free to share links for things that you've done, things that you've found that have enhanced your life. You know, and it doesn't have to be right now, but later come back and share something. And when the Treyer Wilderness Academy is live, we are going to have a forum available in there where we can do this on a regular basis. So that's the point of our community being started or our academy being started is to create community. And... Last week I was mentioning how God has blessed us, and Chad, thank you, you just inspired that thought to uh, mention that. Um, God has given us each a gift, and many of us are looking for um, what we are supposed to be doing in our lives. Many of us are still seeking that. I feel like I have found that for me. I know the mountain man still seems you know, seems to be searching in ways. I see what his skills are, but you know, he's still, he's still looking and maybe you are too. 
And in 1 Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So, you know, where um, we may have one skill, and, and that is our gift, and to be able to share it with someone else and vice versa, that's how we enhance ourselves. Plus, that's where bartering comes into play, too, where one of our skills may enhance um, another's and another may be able to uh, help out another. There's just, it's, and that's how our ancestors lived. That's how they, they functioned. That's how their lives were simple and pure and less chaotic and less rules because it was just, I don't know, it was just such a more wholesome time. And that's what I would love to see our country uh, go back to. I don't know if that will ever happen, but I'd like to hope so in some way. Jill, you said, yes, a cooper. A cooper is someone who makes wooden and, and sta uh, stab vessels. Yes, my husband makes wooden spoons, too. I just read it wrong, and, and it's hard when, when the comments come up. I'm going to see if I can see the whole thing here. She says, cooper work includes casts, barrels, buckets, tubs, butter churns, hogsheads. Yes, all of those things, and that's something that would be so awesome. I love the old cast iron, and we have a huge kettle. We have a huge uh, pig roaster, but also making those old barrels, that's something that the mountain man has talked about, and in order to do that, you need a steamer, and he has actually wor was working at one point on building that, and then we had to switch our resources to something else. So being able to do those things, having those tools, and that's a key too right now, is having those tools, it's hard to find some of them. Um, one of our... Uh, Okay, it was spinning again. Sorry about that. Um, one of our uh, affiliates and sponsors is Layman's, L-E-H-M-A-N-S, apostrophe S. It's layman's.com. And by going to treyerwilderness.com slash layman's, you will see a lot more of them. They uh, have a lot of replicas of the older tools, which, tools, which is very priceless because a lot of the older tools are harder to find or gone. Um... And I typically uh, go to try to find the old ones first. I find them in antique stores, uh, auctions, um, yard sales. And then when we can't find them there, um, we uh, go to layman's for those tools. And it's great to have a resource for those tools when you can't find them. Because having those tools on hand and having those tools available to do these old-timey projects is makes it even more priceless when you're doing it and utilizing the old tools. Uh, also having them on hand moving forward is another resource. So, um, but this is all what, what was on my heart today uh, as far as community, sharing, sharing the joy, sharing um, your, your knowledge, and sharing your joy is part of this too, guys, because um, Oftentimes when you have a, a skill that you are good at, you're excited and you're sharing your joy. And through sharing that process, you're sharing um, your joy with somebody else. And like I've said a lot, there's a lot of hurting people in this world. And sometimes you just don't know how you're going to touch people's lives. And sometimes by simply sharing your knowledge and sharing your skills. And uh, thanks for joining, Jill. Um, and thank you, Rachel. Love you, girl. Um, so, so just they all go together. It all blends. Community, sharing joy, sharing knowledge, sharing skills, and just sharing of one another and sharing of our hearts is just so important and builds strong relationships, strong people, and and makes us warriors in ways. It helps us to keep pushing forward. Sometimes when when we can't, we may be in a in a, a bad way, and in sharing our knowledge, it may bring out some of our joy and and rekindle some of our own joy. So it's just a constant cycle, and I think it's a positive cycle, and I think it's one that we need to focus on. So guys, I need to jump off of here. I have another meeting, but this was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, your company this morning, your time as well, because I know your time is just as val valuable. Chad has just offered that if anybody needs prayer, to please pr uh, PM him through Facebook. He is one of my very big prayer warriors. And guys, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for the rest of your week. 
Dear Jesus, I just thank you for these people joining me today. Just bless our audience. Wrap your arms of love and health and healing around them. And Lord, just strengthen them for their journey and their walk in any valleys they may be in or heading into. And just help them have the 